Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the coverage of the third round qualifier of the Texas Dual Golf Tournament out here at Bitwood Country Club. I'm Cody Brown, joined again by Tom Stovall, as we're bringing you all the coverage as these guys come up 18. And Tom, what's it looking like with these guys in the, the third qualifier? I've spoken with a few of them, and uh, it looks like we've got kind of a broad range of scores out there today. Yeah, it does, and quite frankly, the conditions are considerably different than they've been for the first two qualifiers with the wind blowing quite a bit out of the south, so coming into this 18th green is going to be a little more difficult. So we will see how they will be able to manage their way around uh, the 18th green. They're getting ready to, they just finished on 17. I'm sure I'm going to get a score update here in just a minute, but off on 17 here just shortly, or I'm sorry, on number 18 here shortly. Yeah, and looking at 18 here again, we have a pin position that uh, we've seen pretty frequently, and this is actually a, a really nice pin position. I enjoy playing this one myself. Uh, it's pretty much in the middle of the green up here, right on the shelf. So today, these guys are definitely want to get up here uh, round pin high. If they go past the pin, it's not going to be the end of the world, um, but they definitely want to be around that shelf up top because uh, the further they are front and back, they are obviously, obviously going to have more movement and more speed. The first team that's going to be playing uh, number 18 here, finishing on number 18, the, the twosome of Dayton Draper and Eddie Lohman and Kevin Dusick and Jason McMillan are the ones that are going to be coming up here on 18, getting ready to tee off here just shortly. I can see them uh, walking to the tee box as we speak. Um, just a little bit of information. Dayton had a hole in one on number 17 at Santa Fe. That's, I guess that's the downtown little golf course that we have. Mm -hmm. um, again, we're talking about holes in one over uh, Eddie Lohman had one on number 17 at Riverside. Kevin Dusick had one number on number 14 at Quicksand. That's a pretty good little hole in one there. And again, number 17 at Santa Fe, Jason McMillan had a hole in one there. Yeah, and all these guys in this group are in the second flight today. Uh, we talked to uh, all of them as they made the turn. Uh, Draper and Lohman were through number nine. And uh, Dusick and McMillan were through number nine at six under. So we'll see uh, when we get that update for their score how the back nine has been treating them. Looks like the team of Draper and Lohman are going to be the first team to tee off uh, number 18 here coming in. And the updated score through 17 is Draper and Lohman are now at minus 6 with McMillan and Dusick at minus 10. Oh, wow. Okay, so they've definitely held that pace. Uh, Draper and Lohman uh, kind of picking up their pace, uh, gaining 6 strokes there. And Dusick and McMillan continuing like I said they gained four more so six under and ten under not a bad day at all we'll see how 18 treats them first tee shots underway and splits the middle of the fairway down here quite a ways way down here as a matter of fact he's going to be about 30 yards from the green is all no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. Well, we've got two balls down there, so I guess both of them have already teed off, and we've got one that's perfect, probably 90 yards out, and the other one's probably going to be about 30 yards from the pin, 10, 15 yards from the front edge of the green. Yeah, that's a great drive there, Tom. This one's cutting over the top of the trees. If it doesn't hit the tree, it might cut back into the fairway, and it does. Just a little bit shorter down there, but again, right in the middle of the fairway. These guys are just throwing darts into the fairway, going to give himself a nice. That drive got him to about 110 yards from the pin. Here comes another one. He threw it up over the top side of the trees on the left-hand side. The wind should blow it back just a little bit to the right. 
I did not see that one down. I don't know if it stayed on the left hand side or right hand side, but their left hand side coming down. Yeah, I never saw that one come back, but uh, as you may can hear, there is definitely a breeze out here today. Uh, probably more than we've had in the first and second qualifier. Uh, for sure. So these guys out here are going to have to contend with that today. And it, it's not horrible. It's not as bad as it, it may sound coming through or that you can see the trees out there blowing. But, uh, you know, the higher they get those balls out there, it's definitely going to gonna play with them a little bit. And they're going to have to make sure they want to keep it lower to get out of that wind. I would love to have one of the three drives that I saw that are <laughs> up there. I've never hit a ball that far in my life. <laughs> but uh, that one that's just right off the front edge of the green is just an unbelievable golf drive yeah i mean other than being on the green i don't know if it gets much better than that here on 18 especially into the wind i mean yeah. he must have really laid into that one they are looking over on the uh the, your right hand side of the screen for uh for one of their drives his partner however is in perfect shape just past the uh, little grass hump see out there in the middle of the fairway again we are playing a scramble in the texas duel so it's nice because you can pick the best ball and hit both players hit from there gives each player a good opportunity to uh, if you've got a long drive hitter in your group that's really helpful Yeah, when your partner tees off first and gives you a ball like that one out there, uh, and pretty much takes all the pressure off. <laughs> so this is going to be the team of Dusick and McMillan. They're going to be about 122 from the pin. I'm going to guess it's going to play somewhere in the neighborhood of 125 to 130 against this wind, probably more closer to 130 against the wind. these greens uh, I've been told are still running pretty fast today uh, we were talking to them as they were making their way through and they said uh, they're definitely manageable uh, but they can get away from you and they're still pretty fast I went out there before we went on and did a little putting around where the hole is and definitely if you are above the hole and you hit it just a little too hard past the hole two foot or so there's a real good possibility of it going ahead and rolling down to the bottom of the green um, that'll give you some idea of the little bit of speed that there is that they're working with again this is the team of Kevin Dusick and Jason McMillan getting ready to play into number 18 He's going to have a straight in approach here. And I believe he's going to try and carry that ball all the way up to the top of the ridge. Ball's away. It looks like it's a little bit right. It doesn't look like he's very happy with the results. No, it's not. It's going to be short and left of the right hand bunker. There's a good shot of it. Good work, camera cameraman yeah that one looked like it just got away from him a little bit you can tell by the body language uh, he was not happy but we'll see what his partner can do for him here that looks like a little better golf swing he's staring at it balls coming down gust of wind came up ball hit the green and of course with the spin and the wind is going to end up at the bottom of the green. Yeah, unfortunately that one's going to go all the way off there. That was actually a lot better shot than what it ended up, but you could feel that gust and that's the hardest part when you're playing is if you've got these gusty winds. It's one thing if they're blowing this consistently so you'll have an idea, but when you have these big gusts like we just had and are having throughout the day today, it does make a difference on the uh, shot process, what kind of shot you want to hit in there. And with these guys, they're going to take 
they're going to be about 90 yards. More like 80 yards to the pin here. Looks like that one came up short and to our right side of the green, his left, uh, right in that front side bunker. Again, this is the team of uh, Draper and Lohman. Like you said, right as he was about to swing there, you could feel the wind die down, and then as soon as he hit it, that <laughs> gusted back up, and unfortunately, that's what it can do, you know, carry your ball. 15, 20 yards off your line very easily. on that same line oh and it it's came a good back golf nicely. shot <laughs> there you go that's the spin and the wind and the mm -hmm. green for you right there he hits it it hits the green probably six feet or seven feet from the hole and spins back <coughs> down the hill all the way almost to the front of the green so you know Cody, I, I wonder there's a lot of different ways to play this game and there's a lot of different people who who obviously play it differently but on a shot like that to me I think sometimes it's a little better to take a little more club do more of like a three-quarter swing swing it takes a little bit of spin off the ball so that when it does hit the green maybe it's not going to back up that far um, it's just tough in these wind conditions for anybody that's that's for sure yeah absolutely and I mean I think you're right I, the philosophy of clubbing up and taking maybe not a full swing uh it is going to cut some of that spin off and even if you go past the pin like we were talking about here on 18 it's not the end of the world um i think i would probably prefer going past the pin here and coming back uh rather than sticking it up close and having it roll off the front of the green because now you have a pretty difficult putt uh all things considered you know you got quite a bit of movement uh coming back and the distance of course the only challenge that you have is where they have the pin located is right almost on the crest and with any spin that ball is going to spin back as you have seen already uh, towards the front of the green now when when they let this putt go it's gonna it is going to move quite substantially from uh, obviously to their right to your left on the screen here going to have to give this a pretty good wrap to get it up the hill. Oh, that was a real nice putt right there. He barely missed that. Yeah, I mean, that was just oh. over the outside edge. That one had a real chance of going in. And his miss was on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. on the left-hand side of the hole, but on the right side of the hole in order for it to have fallen in. And did you see the stroke he put on that? I mean, he, <laughs> he definitely hit it. That just shows you how steep this green actually is from that side. This one looks pretty good, too. Another real nice roll there. He left that about, what, 18 inches or so? Yep. Below the hole. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy two putt for him. Here's the team of Draper and Lohman. seeing that uh, they are going to get some information there they can see how fast this green is playing here on 18 they should have gotten a pretty good idea of the speed of the putt just because of their partners um, who they're playing alongside putt is up and on 
Uh, so they too end up about two feet short on the first putt. Definitely a makeable putt there for him to secure their par. So there's no real reason uh, for him to have to leave this putt short. Uh, he's going to get the chance here to give it a good roll and just make sure he gets it there and try and make it. Unfortunately, that one does come up short. Should be a pretty easy par putt here to finish out their day. It should still move a little bit to his right, I would think. <clears throat> Good roll. So that looks like they're going to finish up at 11 under for the day. I believe so. I'll have to check that again. Back in the fairway behind them, you can see that this is the group of Raymond Ledesma and Michael Valdez. Unfortunately, the players that they were originally teamed to play along with, Kaufman and uh, Hagen, they are from, uh, they actually were going to come in from Louisiana, but unfortunately they had, um, had to call in and let people know that they weren't going to make it. They had some uh, family situations that came up, so the players that are playing alongside with them are actually just markers and making sure that everything is going fine with them and the markers are Sonnenberg and uh, Josh Middleton so and they will be the first ones to play in on it on this group here so that they're playing alongside uh, just for fun and companionship and Tom that is 10 under not 11 under uh, 10 under for Dusick and McMillan His shot ended up uh, short and right of the green, probably 10 or 15 yards. This is Colton Sonnenberg, one of the markers, also playing alongside for fun. He hit that one a little bit heavy. Ends up a long ways from the hole. Yeah, they made the turn at uh, four over today, and then coming into 17 at five over, so they've definitely had a better back nine than they did front nine. Here's Raymond Ledesma uh, play first. He's gonna be 103 yards from the pin. Raymond's had two hole-in-ones, both of them at Brady, one on number seven and one on number eight. He also shot his lowest round ever in Brady. Shot a 65. I'd like to have a wow. score like that someday. Yeah, that one would be nice to have on the books. He ended up hitting the ball a little bit long like you were talking about, saying, okay, it's all right to be a little past the pin. Uh, Raymond hit that one to the back fringe, so they will be putting or chipping, probably putting. Um, he's not very far off the green, about 12 inches or so. This is playing partner Michael Valdez. Michael has had a hole-in-one at Santa Fe and has shot a 68 at Brady, so that's a pretty good score. These gentlemen are pretty good players, apparently. Oh, and he almost holed it out. Wow, what a miraculous shot there. I don't know if we have that on replay or not, but that, that ball hit 
not a foot from the hole, jumped forward and spun back just past the hole. Now they've got probably 24 inches, 23 inches for a birdie. That was one great golf shot. Yep, and if you needed an example, <laughs> there it is. That's exactly what you want to do. Raymond and uh, Michael are playing in the second flight, uh, just as the first group that you saw come through uh, was playing in. First to approach the green there is uh, Raymond Ledesma, followed by his partner Michael Valdez. Where do they currently set at, uh, uh, Cody? Right now, it looks like uh, Valdez and Ledesma are five under. And they made the turn at four under, uh, so they've picked up a stroke on the back nine. And it looks like they're going to grab another one here at 18. This is Colton. Chipping up to the pin. It's never a bad thing, Tom, when you're having to fix your divot a few inches from the hole. I'm telling you, there for a second, when it first hit the green and and went forward, I really thought it was going to come back and go in. It was real close to going in. Been quite a way to finish on number 18 with a nice little eagle. Absolutely. This is Colton. Just short there. And this is Josh Middleton putting in. Oh, oh yeah, I think he definitely had the line there. Just needed a couple more turns for that ball to drop. See what Raymond can do here. See if they can finish up with their birdie. Should be no problem. Pretty straight putt. There and it is. Gets it. So that should finish them up at six under for the day. Back in the fairway, you'll see the foursome playing in the second flight of Corey Wingham, Cody Wisdom. Reese Grimmett and Levi Mandrell. So Wiggum and Wisdom had made the turn at two under, and it looks like they're coming in uh, to 18 two under. So they haven't gained or lost any on the back nine here, playing pretty even. And Grimmett and Mandrell, uh, they have gained a couple on the back nine they're sitting at four under right now they made their turn at two under and of course all these golfers in this group and uh, the four teams previous they're all playing in the second flight so the lowest score in this flight today automatically advances to the tournament and that was Reese Grimmett hitting it in to the green on 18. He hits it a little bit short. 
about two foot from the edge of the front edge of the green. This is his playing partner, Levi Mandrell. They have about 104 yards to the flag from where they're located. I'm going to guess it's about a 110 yard shot to the flag, maybe a little bit longer if you want to hit it past the flag. Here's a good shot. It does get hung up on the fringe and that's kind of fortunate actually because uh, that's a makeable putt or chip from the fringe there for the team of Grimmett and Man Mandrell. Over left or to the right of the cart path on the left of your screen, you will see the well-dressed Corey Wingham. This guy is a wonderful man. He's, I've, I've been around him quite a bit and he's, in, he's a joy to be around. He, they're gonna have about 100 yards even and they do have a gap and an opening coming in. Here's Corey shot up into the green. He hits a little bit left and long. Almost pin high actually though, Cody, uh, but not in the bunker so they could chip that close to the hole. Yeah, you had a real nice distance there. I'm wondering if there might be a branch sticking out just a little bit um, because it didn't look like he pulled that any. Uh, so I'm wondering if that's just where he might have been lined up. This is his playing <coughs> partner, Cody Wisdom. Cody's best score has been out here at Bentwood. He shot a 76 and looking out at uh, he's his best score out here is a 71, so he can play a little golf himself. That ball, he came in, he chose to come in a little bit lower. Be interesting to see which shot that they choose to play here. Um, it's uh, not but about 10 yards from the stand that we're setting in. Um, he hit it a little bit low and to the right of the pin uh, over here. So he would be, they would be chipping back up the hill. Which, which one would you choose there, Cody? You know, for me, I think I would take the second shot here. Um, it is a lot further from the pin, but I feel uphill going back. My personal skill set, I think I would have a better shot uh, coming back from this side. But I know a lot of these guys have a real nice touch uh, with their short wedges. And, you know, they can come off the frog hair pretty easily over here and uh, have it you know give it a nice roll going out but I think me personally I would probably take this one back here the shot that Corey hit over here that's on the fringe uh, above the left hand uh, bunker on the right side of the the screen here right side of the bunker will be a very challenging chip shot and that they can't get it on the green very far uh, to get the ball somewhere close to the hole and of course if you hit it too hard it'll go down to the bottom of the green so we'll see which one that they choose they're going to take a look at both of them obviously and we can see his, his uh, colorful pants there and I tell you what uh, it doesn't get better than that Tom no and you should see some of the stuff he comes out here and that's what that's his <laughs> character uh, and uh, he wears some pretty wild stuff They've taken your advice, it looks like, Cody. <laughs> well, there you go. And it's like you said, you know, there wasn't a ton of green on that side to work with, and it takes a delicate touch, that shot over there. here is going to be Cody chipping it onto the green now Corey will give it a shot
looks like he needed just a little more there and he probably wanted to carry that ball probably three or four more feet but still not bad I mean I, either ball that they choose to go with here uh, they definitely have a makeable putt um, if they ball, I think that's going to be a, a bit of a straighter putt for them it's right on the crest uh, in line with that hole so they may choose to go with that one coming off the other side of the green here and you can see uh, he was just off a bit a couple inches above the hole that was Levi Mandrell give it in a roll here's his partner Reese Grimmett Reese and Levi are from Snyder Texas get this they both had their lowest score in Snyder of course Reese shoots a 70. Levi shot a 61 there one day. He must have been on fire. Wow. A 61. <laughs> I don't care what yeah. course you're playing. That's low. Well, I mean, I can shoot a 61 as well, Tom, but that's through 12 holes. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I feel the same way. Here's Corey to finish off for their par. Corey missed that putt a little bit low. <clears throat> His partner Cody will give it a shot now. Should break to his left and does just past the hole. Have about 10 inches for a clean up there for their bogey. Yeah, it looks like that's going to drop them to one under for the day. This will be Levi to finish up, and he rolls it in. I believe <coughs> they make their par. How'd they finish, Cody? Uh, they finished up at four under for the day. All of these groups we've seen come uh, play through 18 so far have been playing in flight number two, quali trying to qualify in flight number two. Uh, the next group up will be uh, trying to qualify for flight number three, and uh, we will see those guys here in just a few minutes. But right now we're going to uh, go to a commercial break and let you hear a little bit of word from our sponsors and our stations. It's hard work and sacrifice and never even thinking twice and it's waving of people you don't know Cause that's how we're born and how we're raised The Concho Valley is our place It's cheering for the blue and the gold Local is your neighbors Local is your friends Local is a place you've always been Then I love the way Case ends low Remain informed on breaking news with the updated Concho Valley homepage app. Now containing severe weather alerts, 
push notifications, extended weather forecasts, and more. Download the Contra Valley Homepage mobile app today. Available on iPhone, iPad, and Android. Welcome to Dreamscapes, the Concho Valley's premier outdoor living design center. Choose from a variety of custom outdoor fire pits, pergolas, and other outdoor accessories to help complement your outdoor style. We sit down with you to help design your dream outdoor living space. We offer a wide variety of grills to choose from, including pellet grills, gas, charcoal, and ceramic, along with all the extra amenities to complement that new grill. Visit us today so we can get started on bringing your outdoor living space to reality. Right here at Dreamscapes, located at 3602 South Chad. You're watching KLST, local news first. KSAN, San Angelo's news channel. Welcome back, everybody, to our third qualifier here in the Texas Dual Golf Tournament at a Bentwood Country Club. We have our next group of guys coming up 18 here, and they are playing in the third flight. We've got the team of Stone and Stone and Gutierrez and Gutierrez. Stone and Stone are from the uh, Midland Seminole area. Uh, Aaron Stone shot a 74 at Hogan Golf Club. His partner Lee Stone shot his best round at Ratliff Ranch. He shot a 75. Neither one of these two gentlemen have had a hole in one and a lot of people haven't. Most people <laughs> think, who play this game haven't. Yeah, I think that's probably uh, more common to say that than to say you have had one. that drive there I'm not sure where that one ended up but I'm thinking looks like he he got that one really high up in the air there this is gonna be Gutierrez Did not see that ball either. It looks like uh, Stone and Stone have picked up a stroke here on the back nine. Uh, right now they're sitting at five over. And then Gutierrez and Gutierrez uh, have remained even on the back nine. They made their turn at one over. All four players are off the number 18 tee box. Unfortunately, we're not able to see where any of the balls ended up that means it could be a challenge and a uh, little coming in but that's what this game's all about yeah absolutely and a, a quick recap for you guys out there uh, that maybe haven't heard us talk about the hole number 18 at Bentwood it, it looks like you just have all sorts of tree trouble left and right uh, when actually it's only about half true uh, on the right side of your screen so the left side of the golfers coming down the fairway that side definitely can be trouble if you end up over there behind those trees now on their right side uh, sometimes you actually want to end up over there depending on where your pin position is um, because it looks like there are a lot of trees but it does open up uh, so if you end up on that side and you're not in the fairway uh, it's not that big of a deal because a lot of times you can get out cleanly well and if you're over on that side the the golfers right hand side the left hand side on your screen like you said at least you have a shot and somewhat of a shot to the pin wherever you're at whether you have to play it low or you can play a regular golf shot on the left hand side not only do you have all the trees that you have to deal with but then also in order to get anywhere close to and even onto the green you're gonna have to carry it over the bunker mm -hmm. and so it's just a really really difficult shot no matter what no matter where you're at if you're on the right hand side of your screen the left hand side of the fairway yep and over there too uh, 
that grass is just so thick over there. I don't know how many times uh, my club has just almost come to a dead stop because uh, it will absolutely reach out and grab your club head. And so, yeah, it is never fun being on that side. And it looks like they might have found one over on that side. And over on the other side of the green, we're still, excuse me, other side of the fairway. Still looking. It always amazes me, Tom, how a little white golf ball can hide so well. <laughs> when you go out there and play and you see how thick that grass <laughs> is and how tall it is, uh, you get somewhat of an understanding of why. <laughs> It looks like uh, they didn't have a ball just off the cart path. Back they here, maybe 15 yards off the fairway. Yeah, and they're going to be 210 yards from the flag from where they're located. That was Craig Gutierrez hitting in did not see where that ball finished. I, you know, I saw it leave the ground there and I could have sworn that I heard it catch a, a branch. I'm wondering if it caught that tree right in front of him. This is Victor Gutierrez. Victor is, uh, had a hole in one on number two in El Dorado. And his best round is here in San Angelo at Quicksand. He shot an 83. Did not see where that ball ended up either. No, I didn't. They're just they're going to make this difficult for us, Tom. Well, and I'll tell you, as far back as they were, they obviously the best. They had the best angle with that particular golf shot, but um, with that particular drive, they had the best angle to the pin that they had of the, any one of the two players, but. They're so far back there that you've got a club at least one, probably two clubs uh, up in mm -hmm. order to get the ball at, to the green. Yep, and for players like me, that becomes all too familiar with the wind, especially when you go, I don't know to go up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm too far out. <laughs> yeah, I there's many par fours that I have to hit it when the wind's blowing. I have to hit a three wood into. So they're going to be 148 yards in. Looks like they'll be taking this shot right here for their third shot, and this is going to be Craig Gutierrez. That's oh, a pretty good no. golf shot. It carries a little bit far, bounces over the left-hand bunker, and rolls back to where we saw the group in front of us chipping from. Yeah, what a nice kick he got there, too. Yeah, he did get a good kick to the right. This is Victor Gutierrez hitting in now. That is the distance. It could be good. And it's going to come up just short there, right on the front of the green. So now they definitely have a decision. Do they want to go with a little chip and run off the back side of the green? Or do they want to take their putt off the opposite side and try and contend with that, that hill and break over there? I don't know about you, but anytime I'm on the green, I want to putt it. Rather than taking another shot where you got to chip or maybe even putt through the fringe. Yeah, and you know, that goes back to the comfortability you have with your clubs, you know, and how often you can get out and play. And like we were talking earlier, some of these guys just have with their putter, and you're absolutely right. It doesn't matter how far they are. They'll say, hey, partner, we're going to take this putt because I feel like I've got a lot better chance of making this than 
than chipping anything. Again, this is the third qualifier. There are four total qualifiers. The next one will be two weeks from today, and that'll actually be the follow final qualifier. Uh, of course, the championship at the Texas Duel will be the following Saturday and Sunday, right here at the beautiful Bentwood Country Club. Over here, just to the right of the cart path, to the left on the screen, see Craig Gutierrez chipping up. sorry that was not that's Lee Stone I'm sorry that was chipping up there my apologies and this is Aaron Stone go they both actually caught their ball very cleanly uh, coming out of the rough over there, they just ended up a little short. team of Gutierrez and Gutierrez has decided to take that putt Tom so they are more comfortable with their putter than having to play another chip I like this idea because now you got to come up the come up the hill and you don't have to worry about hitting it too hard I don't think I mean you're gonna have to really like we've seen earlier with many of the other groups really gonna have to give it a good wrap and he did so is it gonna get there Yeah, and that Just was actually a, a real nice putt there. He had a pretty good line. He was only off about an inch or so outside the cup. But seeing that, his partner can adjust and give it a roll here himself. This is Aaron Stone. Pretty good putt. That's going to go way past... Yeah, and I think that's like we were talking about. That was a case of him seeing where his partner's ball was and just said, you know what? I'm just going to make sure I'm not short on this. of you who haven't heard us talk about it before this green in particular but all the greens out here at Bentwood can be so deceiving sometimes it looks like you know you're not gonna have to hit it that hard and especially how fast these greens can be they just kind of beat you up and then you get to the end of the day and you say you know what I'm not gonna hit this one this hard when in fact uh, as Tom said, you got to give that one a pretty good stroke coming up that hill or it's not going to get there. Lee Stone just putted. This will be Aaron. Trying to make this for bogey.
just off the outside edge. Did he push that one, Tom, or was that the break? You know, I, from this angle, I couldn't tell because I because he had his back to me, but. Oh my goodness. I just can't <laughs> the seem to same find same putt twice in a row. I have had those days. Mm -hmm. Too many of them. And unfortunately, Tom, I think that was a triple bogey to finish up their day. And again, these two teams are trying to qualify in the third flight. That was Craig Gutierrez that just, just tapped in for their bogey. They're going to finish up the day at two over in that third flight. And with both of those teams in the third flight, that means that Gutierrez and Gutierrez will advance to the championship tournament out here. We have a little bit of a gap between this, uh, this foursome and the next foursome coming up. So while we have that, we will take a little quick commercial break. This is you're watching the third qualifier of the Texas Duel from Bentwood Country Club. We'll be right back. There's the storm, there's the warning. It covers Paint Rock, it covers areas north of Eden. Exactly on the one year anniversary. I don't know what the odds are on that. We'll do the calculations with later. Power going out again. I don't even know what count that is. Maybe 12 or 13. That will be 14. No, 14, okay. It's hard work and sacrifice and never even thinking twice and it's waving of people you don't know.
Cause that's how we're born and how we're raised The Concho Valley is our place It's cheering for the blue and the gold Local is your neighbors Local is your friends Local is a place you've always been Then I love the way Case ends local every day Remain informed on breaking news with the updated Concho Valley homepage app. Now containing severe weather alerts, push notifications, extended weather forecasts, and more. Download the Concho Valley homepage mobile app today. Available on iPhone, iPad, and Android. Welcome to Dreamscapes, the Concho Valley's premier outdoor living design center. Choose from a variety of custom outdoor fire pits, pergolas, and other outdoor accessories to help door style. We sit down with you to help design your dream outdoor living space. We offer a wide variety of grills to choose from, including pellet grills, gas, charcoal, and ceramic, along with all the extra amenities to come grill. Visit us today so we can get started on bringing your outdoor living space to reality. Right here at Dreamscapes, located at 3602 South Chad. You're watching KLST Local News First. KSAN, San Angelo's News Channel.
back everybody to the third qualifying round of the Texas out here at Bentwood Country Club. I'm of course Cody Brown joined still by Tom Stovall. Looks like we've got our next guys here on the tee box on 18 getting ready to come up. They are <coughs> playing in the fourth flight of this tournament. Uh, Tom who do we have on the tee box right now? It looks like the the people that just teed off is the group of the Orsac and Freeman. Uh, teeing off, one from Sterling City, the other from Robert Lee. Next up will be Hensaw and Reyes. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Hensaw and Reyes had a pretty good front nine, making the turn at one under. So we'll uh, we'll see here. And actually, it looks like they are one under right now as well. So they've played. Uh, even coming through the back nine. I think that was Freeman Jr. that just teed off there. This is going to be Lonnie Henshaw getting ready to hit. He sends that one down the left hand tree line. Is it cutting back? Did not see where that ball finished. No, Oops. it looks like it started down the left side of the fairway, but I didn't see where it ended up. Cody, well, we got a minute, and these guys are pulling around to their second shot that they have to choose from. Can you give, give us a little bit on so far who's qualified during this particular qualifier? Yeah, absolutely. So in the second flight, it looks like we're going to have the team of Dusick and McMillan qualifying with their score of 10 under today. Uh, and in our third flight division, uh, it's going to be Gutierrez and Gutierrez, and they're going to qualify for that championship with a two over. And then, of course, these teams coming forward are in that fourth flight. They're the only two teams in the fourth flight, so we'll see who's going to qualify here between them, and it looks like it's pretty close. Uh, as I said, Hinshaw and Reyes, uh, they were coming into 17-1 under, and it looks like Freeman and Orsac, they dropped a couple strokes in the back nine. They made their turn at two under, but they're coming up 18 even, uh, so we're pretty close here. We've only got one stroke difference. That's the way you like to have it coming down to the 18th hole to try to qualify in your particular flight Let me give you a little bit of information about these guys. It's interesting. We talk about holes and ones and low scores and things of that nature um, The team of Henshaw and Reyes from Sweetwater, Texas um, Lonnie Henshaw hasn't had a hole in one but his lowest score is in Sweetwater and he shot a 74 his playing partner uh, Blue Reyes uh, from Sweetwater also has had three hole-in-ones which is interesting and uh, his lowest score is a 75 so wow. does it say where those hole-in-ones were were they all in the same course yeah they were all on, looks like they were all <coughs> on the Sweetwater course so. wow. uh, Orsac and Freeman um, William Orsac is from Sterling City and uh, Looks like he's had three hole-in-ones also, and they've all been in the Houston area with his lowest score coming on Black Horse Cypress, and he shot a 67 there. That's a pretty pretty good score there. I'm sh if it's a 72, obviously he's minus five on that course. And then Melvin Freeman, his lowest score is an 82, and that's right here at Bentwood Country Club. Well, it looks like they're... We have a <coughs> team split in the fairway here. We got one team over on the left side in the trees, but it looks like they're going to be okay. And then our other team is over on the right side, and could be a little tricky for them. Looks like that's uh, Melvin Freeman Jr. that you're looking at right there coming in to the hole, and they're going to have about 161 yards to the pin. Don't know if they can go over the trees it looks like he was trying to go over the trees the ball did go to the right or 
to his right to this to us to our left on the screen with uh, the ball ending up over there close to the cart path his playing partner now William Orsack will be playing obviously from the same position we'll see what he can do from the right hand trees looks like he's got a pretty high lofted club in his hand so he's obviously able to get over the trees and feels like he can get to the green or somewhere close to the green anyway. Well, and the wind has died down a little bit. It's more of just a steady breeze right now, so that might be why they're considering going over the trees, you know, thinking, well, it's died down enough. I don't think it's going to hinder me that much. Over on the other side of the fairway coming into the green, the uh, ball was just struck by Lonnie Henshaw. And it ends up in the left or right hand bunker. They're 125 yards out. This will be, I think this is his playing partner, Blue Reyes. They are far enough back that they can get over the tree, it looks like. They're short enough to the fin to the pin, but far enough back from the trees to be able to get over the trees, it looks like. He took it up over the trees. We'll see where it finishes. Did not see where that finished either. And as we take a look back here on the other side, it does look like that second ball that was hit, uh, it made its way pretty far off there to their right side of the green. But they are about pin high, so they're going to have a touchy little chip here over the bunker try and carry it to the green and let it release right off the top of that crest. This will be a very difficult chip shot as he has to go over the green. That's a great chip shot. Very nice. He hits it to about 20 feet from the pin right over the top of the bunker. Really nice shot there. Got a chance to save their par. This will be William Orsack. onto the green that's probably going to go back down the hill picks up a little bit of speed and by the time it's done it may be on the front edge of the green yeah so that's going to leave him a, a relatively straight putt there if i'm looking at the green correctly tom so they should uh, have a good chance there at cleaning up this hole with a par So over on the left-hand side of the green, it would be Henshaw and Reyes. Uh, what's the update again, Cody, on where they stand? These uh, two teams are trying to qualify in the fourth flight. Yeah, both of them are trying to, to make that championship in the fourth flight. And right now we have Henshaw and Reyes at one under. And Freeman and Orsak are even. They're going to come back across the green here and go ahead and take the shot out of the bunker. 
this is going to be a pretty straightforward bunker shot a lot of green to work with here of course playing in a scramble the nice thing is is that you'll be able to try to get the best lie as possible out of that bunker Like Lonnie's going to go first out of the bunker. Nice little bunker shot up to about 12 feet from the hole. Give him a good shot. Pretty straight putt at it if they need to use it. his ball. went real steep into that caught too much sand it doesn't come out as good as his partner so they're gonna end up having a about a 12 footer or so I believe that's to say par isn't it Cody it is that's gonna be for par and then of course we have another par putt here from the opposing team of Freeman and Orsack Six inches, eight inches, it looks like short. So, if his partner makes this here and they finish up with a par, that is going to force the other team to make their par putt. Oh, just hits the top out. side of the hole and just misses. here for his par putt to finish up at one under this putt would win it for him putts on his way and just misses on the low side that one a little bit but that means Hinshaw and Reyes are gonna finish up with a bogey which will finish them even meaning Freeman and Orsak also take a bogey on this hole that means they're gonna finish up at one over so Hinshaw and Reyes are going to head to that championship tournament Coming down the fairway is the final group of our coverage today of the third qualifier here at Bentwood Country Club. It is uh, interesting to see we have one of these groups trying to qualify in the first. 
and Will because they're the only ones playing in the first flight this particular qualifier. And then we have the other group who will qualify also because they're playing in the fifth flight. Uh, but the two are playing together. So it's uh, interesting to see that the difference in the, the, two play, the two teams here. Well, I tell you what, this is the grouping to be in right here. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you end up doing for the day because, you know, you're qualifying regardless. You just have to finish <laughs> and sign your card, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who you're following there on your screen is Toby Morris. He's from Rochelle, Texas. His best round was in Brady, Texas, where he shot a 72. That's very, very respectable. I think Brady is a nine-hole course that you play twice, and I'm, I don't remember if they're separate tee boxes or separate tees. I think there are a separate set of tees that you play when you play the, the nine holes for the second time. Um, but I do but I do think that it ends up being a par 72 when you play that twice, and so he shot even par once at uh, Brady, so that's his lowest score. Very, very good round. Again, Toby Morris and Michael Cook, they're both uh, playing, qualifying in the fifth round. This first up will be Toby hitting in. They're going to be about 190 yards out, Cody, into that wind. So I'm going to guess this is probably a 200, about a 210-yard shot, a little bit uphill. He did not like it. The club goes through, and it ends up going right. I didn't see the finish on that. His playing partner, Michael Cook from Brady, Texas. His best score is a 77 at Brady. Both of these gentlemen were hitting irons. I couldn't hit an iron that far, but. Looks like he made good contact there. Let's see if he likes it. It ends up over here just to the right of the cart path. Left hand side of your screen here and the next to play will be Kelby Clinton and Clay Cunningham are qualifying in the first round. Kelby is from Stanton, Texas. His best score ever it was in Denver City and he shot 64 that day so really good score and Clay Cunningham's from Midland, Texas. Uh, he had a hole in one at num on number two in Brownwood. Best score is a 65 and he did that at Green Tree in Midland. Sure glad that the gentleman came up here and played in the qualifying rounds for the Texas duel. We got lots of guys today that have had rounds down in the 60s. That's just phenomenal. They're going to have 95 yards to the green, and first up will be Kelby Clinton. I would expect one of these two gentlemen playing in the first flight to get it pretty close, or at least close enough to make for birdie. Cody, that ball hit a little bit short of, of the, or quite a bit short of the pin and spun back onto the fringe. Yeah, he definitely wanted to carry that one a little further, and I'm wondering if he just chose incorrectly. You, see, you saw him switch clubs there uh, right at the end, right at the last minute. I'm wondering if he should have taken the first one. This is Clay. Sure has a nice golf swing. Ball comes in and a great result for Clay. There you go. That's that shot that uh, you were expecting right there. That's a solid shot. Definitely leaves them a great look for birdie there. Probably about 10 foot. A little bit up and then just slightly downhill. The ball should break from their left or for, from their right to their left just slightly. Looks like Clinton and Cunningham, I guess. Cody, they were minus eight, you said, coming to the 18th tee box. Is that correct? 
Uh, Clinton and Cunningham. Yes. Coming into uh, 18, they were 8 under. I know they made their turn at 3 under, so the back nine has been good to them. Picking up 5 strokes here, and it looks like they're going to grab another one on 18. So that's going to put them 6 under just for the back nine. <clears throat> You know, and and Cook and Morris have played respectable because they're playing and trying to qual they're qualifying in the fifth flight, and uh, they're only five over. So sometimes playing with players that abilities are a little bit better than yours makes your game get a little bit better. This will be Michael Cook. He'll be hitting a pitch shot up to the hole. Hit that one a little bit thin and the ball ends up going past the hole and off the back side of the green yeah and you <clears throat> Tom you just never know you know uh, we just saw guys come through earlier today in the third flight that ended up shooting eight over you know so these guys being in the fifth flight coming in around five over it's definitely respectable let's see what Toby Morris does here to be a pretty good shot. I don't know if it's going to make it all the way to the green, but it should stay right there. Yeah, I need a little bit more behind it, but that is going to stick right there. It's not going to roll down the front of the green, so they're going to have a putt at it now. If I'd have been them, I think I would have ran up and marked that ball real quick before the before the wind tried to blow it because if it if it gets any type of roll back at all it'll start rolling towards the bottom of the green yeah and you know we've seen that happen uh you know and actually the last time that we were out here uh for the partnership out here at bentwood and, uh, we saw the guys do that very quickly you know they'd hop out and go up and mark that ball because you're right a gust of wind comes through and you know these greens are so fast and on that slope right there especially that that ball can easily just start rolling and never stop and once it gets going, when it's going down that steep slope on number 18 green, there's just no way for it to stop. But these two guys have had a good day because both of them knew that they were going to qualify for the championship coming up in a couple, three weeks. And uh, I'm sure they had a good time meeting one another and playing alongside one another. I think first step to try to finish their par is going to be the team of Cook and Morris with Toby trying to run this in for par. Oh, his playing partner is going to step up and hit it in first or attempt to. Michael Cook. Again, Michael's from Brady. The, their playing partners are standing in a position in which I cannot see the hole. It must be. I just caught a glimpse of it now. So he, he's just past the hole. Uh, he's probably got about 18 inches past the hole that he left it. So. Toby Moore's for par. just over it. I think the ball actually rolled directly over the hole and just had a little too much speed there. This looks like Clay Cunningham to try to make it for birdie. That was a really nice roll there. You just needed needed to play it about a 
half a ball to a ball further outside, and he would have had that. He got awful aggressive with it. Now they've got quite a little comebacker. This is a really good angle right here that our camera folks are showing us. You'll be able to see the break on this putt. See how far he started that outside the hole? And just off the inside edge. I think he even thought he had that. Yeah, one. I think he thought he did. So that means Clinton and Cunningham are going to finish up their day with an 8 under. Really respectable round. Yeah, that is a great round there. Cook That's here to see if he can finish this one up. And, and he does to take his bogey. And that means that Cook and Morris will finish their round at six over. Uh, but they will still qualify. As we said, they were the only team playing in the fifth flight. Uh, so they will qualify at six over. And Clinton Cunningham, the only team in the first flight. So they will qualify with their eight under round. Cody, I think what we'll do is we'll take a little quick break, and when we come back, we'll wrap everything up from the third qualifying round here at Bentwood Country Club of the 2018 Texas Duel. There's the storm. There's the warning. It covers paint rock. It covers areas north of Eden. You know, exactly on the one-year anniversary. I don't know what the odds are on that. We'll do the calculations later. Going out again. I don't even know what count that is. Maybe 12 or 13. I don't know about now. It's 14. 14. Okay. It's hard work and sacrifice, and never even thinking twice. And it's waving of people you don't know. Cause that's how we're born and how we're raised. The Concho Valley is our place. It's cheering for the blue and the gold. Local is your neighbors. Local is your friends Local is a place you've always been Then I love the way Case and slow Remain informed on breaking news with the updated Concho Valley homepage app. Now containing severe weather alerts, push notifications, extended weather forecasts, and more. Download the Concho Valley homepage mobile app today. Available on iPhone, iPad, and Android. Welcome to Dreamscapes, the Concho Valley's premier outdoor living design center. Choose from a variety of custom outdoor fire pits, pergolas, and other outdoor accessories to help complement your outdoor style. We sit down with you to help design your dream outdoor living space. We offer a wide variety of grills to choose from, including pellet grills, gas, charcoal, and ceramic, along with all the extra amenities to complement that new grill. Visit us today so we can get started on bringing your outdoor living space to reality. Right here at Dreamscapes, located at 3602 South Chad. You're watching KLST, local news first. KSAN, San Angelo's news channel. Well, we had another great qualifier out here at Bentwood for the Texas Dual Golf Tournament, Tom. And uh, we actually have the fourth and last qualifier coming up two weeks from today. So there's still time out there, guys. If you want to come out here and qualify for this tournament, uh, you still got time. I believe uh, Jay said it goes up at 5 o'clock today. You can already sign up for the next one. Yeah, and the nice thing about knowing that the last qualifier is coming in two weeks is you can go online, you can see what the scores are for the flights in which you probably will be competing in. So you know at least what you need to do uh, or at least where the leaders have qualified at. So it gives you an idea of, of what you can expect or what you can expect, what you need to expect to be able to shoot, to be able to qualify 
for the championship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a great point. Uh, the guys that are playing in the first qualifier and the second qualifier, they're kind of hanging on going, oh man, I don't know. Don't know if I need to, to play again. Uh, but as you know, the guys who didn't qualify in the first ones, they can also come out and, and try again. Yeah. You know, so it's not just for the guys who haven't played yet. I want to take a minute to thank our crew. Um, they are getting really good at this and they're spend a lot of time out here in the heat the sun um, you just don't you know we we get to talk and be under the shade and and it seems like it's really pretty easy for what we do but for what everybody else does around here there's there's a lot of people that work behind the scenes to try to make this happen for you guys and I hope that uh, those of you have tuned in for it enjoy it and, and appreciate it and we're going to be bringing this back again uh, in two weeks for the fourth and final qualifier and then of course the championship will be the following weekend after that on the 24th and 25th of August so um, I hope you enjoyed today's coverage Cody I always enjoy doing this with you and always and uh, I really enjoyed today. The, the It went a little smoother, a little faster today, I think, than it had been. And, and there was a little bit of a lull there for 10, 15, 20 minutes as some of the teams were trying to catch up. But at the end of the day, I think it went it went, it went went pretty well. And, um, and I really thought the coverage the guys did was real good, too. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, with this last qualifier coming up, uh, we're going to have a lot more teams. Uh, so... The pace should be a little faster and we should have more coverage uh, that we can bring to all of you out there. So, like I said, that one's going to be in two weeks. And then uh, the following weekend we'll have the tournament, which is uh, so that'll be Friday and Saturday uh, that we'll be out here covering that. So for uh, for all of us here from Concha Valley Homepage, powered by KLST and KSAN, we'd like to say once again, thank you very much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed the coverage, and please uh, visit Concha Valley Homepage as often as you can. There's always stuff coming up on there, and we're doing a lot of streaming things nowadays, so you might find some things that are interesting to you there, too. So for all of us here at uh, Concha Valley Homepage, I'm Tom Stovall, Cody Brown. Thank you all very much, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks.